Today we're talking about microcates on Cluster API. We're going to get down in the weeds with Cluster API, how it works for lifecycle management, how you can deploy out microcates on top of it, and what this means for the declarative provisioning of Kubernetes clusters. Stay tuned. So let's start with a quick recap on what is Cluster API. You'll see that I'm on the homepage here, which pretty well illustrates uh, the domain and what Cluster API tries to achieve. But I think that sometimes it's a little bit complex for people to get into it from the outside. And it, it's sort of overwhelming to think, is this Kubernetes? Am I doing something else? So let's take a little look at this. It defines Cluster API as a set of patterns and API extensions. And that's right. Think about Cluster API as almost like something you deploy into your Kubernetes cluster. So I might have a microcates cluster. I do kubectl, apply components of Cluster API. It goes off and does something. And now suddenly, I have a cluster somewhere else. So let's dig into how that works. Well, the first thing to understand is that Cluster API comes with its own CLI. It's called Cluster CTL, as you can see here. Um, if we go to Cluster CTL, in fact, which is just right here, we can install it on our path and we can do stuff with it. What does it do? Well, it will pull in the right components that are needed to provision infrastructure. Let's have a look at what that really means. So in this example here, I have a local Kubernetes cluster. That could be microcates, it could be whatever. What I'm going to do is call cluster CTL init provider AWS or OpenStack or anything else. Depending on the flavor of what I ask for depends on what it's going to deploy. So if I ask for AWS, it deploys the AWS infra provider pod. If I deploy OpenStack, it deploys the OpenStack infra provider pod. Both of these types of pods know how to reconcile certain things. They understand that when a piece of YAML comes into the cluster that they speak, they can go and do something with that. So as a user, what does this mean? Well, it means I need to have at least a cluster.yaml. I also need to have a machine deployment.yaml and a few other bits and pieces. And we'll go through an example momentarily. With these resources that I've defined declaratively, I can go ahead and apply them. When I apply, what happens? Well, firstly, the infra provider says, hey, I understand that you wanted an AWS provider. Therefore, I'm going to start this journey. So what it does is it goes off and provisions some machines. So get me some. EC2 machines, please. Once it's done that, the EC2 machines come back and those are showing up in your cluster as a machine set or a machine deployment. And think about it, it's just a CRD. So it's a custom resource in your deployment, uh, in your cluster, sorry, like that. So machines. Once the machines are around, they're blank. Nothing's running on them. So that's when the bootstrap provider watches the cluster resource and says, hey, I know that you want me to deploy kubeadm or microcates. And so the bootstrap provider goes off and will then run a cloud in it and install Kubernetes. And in a nutshell, Cluster API is as simple as that. It is a set of processes and a set of components that are interoperable that can help you to be abstracted out of the weeds and define building a cluster on any infra that's supported out of the box. What's really exciting about this is it's not just the dash dash provider for infra. What we've done is we've managed to build a bootstrap provider so now what you can do is you can say dash dash bootstrap microcates. I want a microcates cluster on AWS, on Oracle Cloud, on OpenStack, on Kubefer. And so therefore we're democratizing what Kubernetes runs and where it runs. So I hope that was a good quick refresher on what cluster API is and how it works. Oh, and just the last thing I'd say is once you've got your remote Kates cluster running in somebody else's cloud, you can do something like cluster API or even uh, cluster CTL get kubeadm config, get microcates config, and suddenly you can manage your federated clusters in other clouds really easily. So let's go ahead and provision a microcates based cluster API uh, Kubernetes cluster. First thing we want to do is to check out the repository here. So this is only for the short term before microcates gets mainlined into CAPI. However, I was excited to present this and I wanted to give it to you so that you can test it out straight away. What that means you need to do for now is you want to check out this repository, which is the canonical slash cluster API bootstrap provider microcates. The link will be in the video. And then you want to follow this guide. So the first thing that it describes is you want to install cluster CTL. I mentioned that a moment ago. That's super important because that helps us do the generation and the management of the CAPI components. The next thing we want to do is install our bootstrapping cluster. So I have that. I've got a microcates cluster on my local machine. And then we want to make sure we've got DNS installed on that. Afterwards, this is the really important part. This is now describing the additional providers we want to bring in. So out of the box, Cluster API comes with kubeadm as the default Kubernetes distribution that is installed. 
But what we want to do is now add these providers. So we're going to go to this directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install those into that directory and we can make sure that they are up and running. And what will happen is it will pull in those resources so that we can use them. So what I'm going to do is go to cluster API, cluster CTL, .yaml, and add those in. And so now we have the control plane provider and the bootstrap provider, and that will pull in the CRDs that are required to run microcades. Because I'm going to be using AWS, I'm going to then scroll down and go to the AWS documentation. So that's just down here at the bottom. So first things first, it says I want to do a cluster CTL generate, uh, and then I want to then do an apply. So let's go through these steps. So the top one here is actually just to list out what's required. And if you actually are curious on what that looks like, well, I can show you right now. So let's just go across and do that. So you can see that these are all the variables that are important. What I would do is to store my AWS stuff in my bash RC file. For example, region name is something you use time and time again. Um, and I'd probably keep my keys in some, somewhere else sensitive that I could just inject into the CLI temporarily. So what I've done for this video is I've put them somewhere else that's being sourced by my bash RC and I can pull them in. So I won't show you those, but what I will show you are the parts that you need to configure. So you go to your templates file, cluster templates, aws.rc. This RC file lets you configure the really important stuff, one of which is to actually set an SSH key. Now, if you've not done this before, let me just quickly show you what that looks like. You go into your EC2 management and you click down on key pairs. And you want to create a key pair. And that's really important because that's how um, the cloud in it will actually connect to that machine and then do the bootstrap provision. So you want to install that and create that key as a pen file and then download that key and you are good to go. So after that, let's go back to our code and we're going to figure out what's next. Well, so after we've got this file, the next thing to do is to actually initialize um, our blank cluster. So let's just go ahead and create um, a cluster from the generator. Now I've done one of these earlier, but I'm going to print it out again just so you can see it. Cluster AWS.yaml. I'm going to take you through all of the components here because I think it's really overwhelming. Now the trick is with cluster API resources is that anything that starts with cluster dot is a core primitive and anything else is an extension. So remember at the beginning I talked about infrastructure providers and bootstrap providers, and there's some other resources too, like control plane. All of those things, when you see that, that means it is a derivative um, for your current implementation, right? And I'm going to talk you through what all that means. So first things first, this is a core resource here. This is cluster. You're effectively saying, I want a cluster, and it's made up of these two things. The control plane ref, which is the bootstrap provider reference, and the infrastructure reference. I'm saying, given you two th these two things, go off and do it. I want a microcates on AWS. That's kind of what I'm describing here. When I say I want one of those, um, it goes off and looks at the other resources and pulls things in. So first thing is that if you look at the infrastructure ref, it understands that I'm looking at this new kind called AWS cluster, which is a custom resource that comes with CAPI. This is the AWS cluster, which is effectively just sorting out your connection. It says, here's the region, here's the SSH key. When you're using that AWS provider, the other thing it's going to look for is down here. It's going to say, okay, well, you told me that you want an AWS provider, so I'm expecting to see some other resources. One of which is the AWS machine template. This is how big should the machines be? What SSH key do they use? Should they have a public IP? So that's all specific to AWS. You'll see I also have a few other configuration properties down here for AWS, but those are much the same, just determining which profiles to use and whether or not um, the control plane should be the same size as the worker nodes. Once I've got that, you can also see at the top in cluster, you have microcase control plane. That microcase control plane is described just below. And this is the secret source of why you might want to have different Kubernetes distributions for cluster API. We think microcase is pretty exciting because it has this really rich add-on ecosystem and we build the add-ons for microcase, right? It's not just a Helm install, they're actually configured to work with the underlying case. Now, hard sell aside, what's really fun is that we can already start switching add-ons on and off. So if I'm a small company that has the um, burden of trying to deploy out Kubernetes clusters for every developer, I want the Kate's clusters out of the box to have OPA, to have kubevert, to have kubeovn, to have certain capabilities. I can either link my add-on repository and pull those in, or I can use the core ones. So you can effectively have pre-configured Kate's out of the box. And this is one of our main incentives 
to use Cluster API because look how easy it is with this declarative API. So we've described the control plane, we've told it what we want, and then you'll see the control plane says, oh yeah, by the way, I want one of these types of machine templates for the control plane. So the control plane uses one size of machine, and then the machines, which are part of the, um, the worker pool, are a different size. So a few different concepts to get to grips with there. But effectively, we're just describing machines and sizes. And the last thing that's worth mentioning is we have a microcase config template. This is stuff that gets passed into the Bootstrap provider that just describes you know, any particular cloud init options. And we've decided to uh, pass in one that lets the uh, logic of the provider describe whether or not it wants to do some remapping on ports. You could have other things as well, right? You can actually define stuff on the operating system here that's being installed if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and deploy. So we want to go cluster CTL init, bootstrap microcates, control plane microcates, and infrastructure provider on, in this case, is going to be AWS. So you now see that what's going to happen is it's going to pull in the right infrastructure components. It's going to look for the bootstrap provider and the control plane provider from our config file that we defined in our um, hidden fold of the cluster CTL, and it's going to pull in those CRDs so it understands how to speak microcates. If you want to see what that actually looks like, let's go in here and look at CRDs. And if we go down to microcates, now you can see it understands all of the custom resources that are specific to this Kubernetes installation as a bootstrap provider. So that's great. So now what I can do is I can drop out, I can go kube control apply cluster aws.yaml. And what's going to happen is microcates gets deployed. Now our cluster is provisioned. Let's take a look around and see what's actually happening and what resources we have to play with. You can see here that I have machines. Machines define what's your cluster made up of, right? That could be several worker pools that has a couple of machines in it. It could be the control plane. You can see for this example, we've got a control plane machine and a worker machine. What's also interesting is that you can see that the node name has been populated, the provider ID, which is relevant to AWS, has been populated here as well. And if you go into the machine, you can see that it is successfully up and running and the node is healthy. Also, as I mentioned earlier on, this Kappa controller manager, which contains your AWS uh, API integration, is describing that the EC2 machines are up and running. That's also reflected when I go into my browser and I look in my region, I can see that I have my microcase machines. I have my bastion, my control plane, and my worker node here. Let's go back and actually figure out, well, you know, how do I then connect to that? So the thing that we want to do is we're going to go and use cluster API again to figure out how to get that. So what we're going to do is call cluster CTL. And cluster CTL is going to get our cube config. Get cube config, microcates AWS, which is the name of our cluster config. So now we've grabbed the cube config from our remote cluster that we've just built. And now we're going to go cube control get pods cube config equals cube config. And there we have it. You can see that I've got three minutes and eight seconds of my newest pod. And we have a cluster that we're connecting to remotely. This cluster is completely managed from this local cluster here. I can delete this cluster and it will go off and destroy the resources in AWS. I hope that this has been a powerful introduction to microcates on Cluster API and perhaps even Cluster API if you weren't familiar with it. It's an incredibly idiomatic and nice way to work with declarative resources in Kubernetes. There are other projects such as Control Plane which do this much the same thing but extend it to other resource types such as storage solutions, such as networking solutions, etc. What this is really nice for is that you can put this inside of a GitOps process. You can define your cluster and commit it to Git and then have cluster API go off and deploy that cluster out. There's no longer the need to have these complex state files that are kept in different locations or these one-shot provisioning processes. What's also nice that I didn't cover about cluster API is that you can actually do upgrades to those pools. You can switch out the machines with an upgrade. So it's a great way of managing that entire life cycle of your Kubernetes cluster. I hope this has been useful. And as ever, please do leave comments, like, and subscribe. Let me know how you get on. Go off and try microcates in Cluster API. As I said, the documentation and all of the easy stuff that I did inside of the YAML and the configuration is being mainlined soon enough, so you won't have to do that. But for now, you can find it in the links below. And thanks again.